All right, nerds, we're back at it. Today, we start unit 310, trigonometric equations and inequalities. We'll end with the inequalities, and that'll be on the third day of the lesson. So yeah, I'm going to teach this across three days, okay? And after those three days, we may or may not get a practice. I'm not really sure, okay? We'll just, we'll just see how that goes. We'll see how this goes. The very first question is asking us to solve the equation sine of x equals one half on this domain. And we have a graph of that below. So we've got y equals sine of x and we have y equals one half. Solutions are gonna be places where our graphs intersect each other. So on this domain, hopefully you can see there are five solutions. Hopefully you can see there are five solutions. And if you're given an image, it's pretty darn easy to find your solutions, isn't it? Or if it was a graphing calculator question, it'd be pretty darn easy because you just second trace intersect to figure out where these things intersect. <clears throat> so first, can we name the five solutions below just by looking at the picture? Well, of course we can. It would help if we knew the scale that we're looking at, though. So let's see. I've got... One, two, three, four, five, six. My pie has been split into six pieces. So that means every single tick mark is a pie over six. So that is going to be one pie over six, two pie over six, three pie over six, four pie over six, five pie over six. This would be 12 pie over six. So that's 13 pie over six. Uh, 14, 15, 16, 17 pie over six. And to the far left, that's negative 6 pi over 6, negative 7 pi over 6. So, of course, we can see our five solutions. They are x equals negative 7 pi over 6, comma, positive pi over 6, and then 5 pi over 6, 13 pi over 6, and... 17 pi over 6. <clears throat> I'd like you to see, though, that these two solutions are closer to each other than these two solutions. So I can't just write one generic rule that describes all of them. I mean, at least not easily. It would be kind of a pain in the butt. So what do we do? What we do is we write two generic rules. Two of them. Okay? We'll have an x sub 1 and an x sub 2. And what I want you to realize is that this one, this one, and this one are all on the decreasing side of the wave, whereas this one and this one are on the increasing side of the wave. And since sine of x is a periodic function, the green circled things will repeat themselves exactly once every period of the function. The blue circled ones will repeat themselves exactly once per period of the function. So let's get our, I don't know, green ones because I'm still holding the green pen. Let's write those as x1. So x1 is, the first one we can see on this picture is pi over 6 plus what is the period length of sine of x? It's 2 pi. So that means the green ones are going to repeat themselves every 2 pi. This is obviously when n is an integer. The blue ones, x sub 2. It doesn't matter if you start at negative 7 pi over 6, you start at... 5 pi over 6, it's, it's completely up to you. Um, nobody likes negative people or negative numbers, so let's start at 5 pi over 6. But it doesn't matter, it's the same thing as saying negative 7 pi over 6 because the coterminal. There. That is our answer set. It shows us every single time, both positive and negative, where sine of x would take on the value of 1 half. But that's if we had a picture. What would we have done 
if we didn't have a graph? That's the question. Because, well, most of the time you're not going to be able to use your graphing calculator to solve trig equations. So what do you do? Luckily, one half is two of the side lengths of a special right triangle that we know. So let's talk about it like this. In which two quadrants is sine positive? Quadrant one is one of them. Come on, guys. I want lots of people talking to me. One and two. Thank you. So quadrants one and two are the two opportunities where we have to generate solutions. By the way, that's quadrant one. That's quadrant two. But what we would do without graphing is we would draw our four quadrants. And I'm going to draw my picture somewhat to scale. I'm going to try. I'm going to try, which I'll show you why in a moment. I'm going to turn the picture upside down for a moment, if you don't mind. There. I did my best. Sine is y over r. The missing side of these two triangles, what would it be? Square root of 3. So this is clearly a 30, 60, 90 triangle. What is the size of the reference angle then in degrees? 30 degrees. This is a 30 degree reference angle, and so is this. And all 30 degree angles as radians are what fraction of pi? They're pi over 6's. So we know that all of our answers are going to be pi over 6's. Good? Awesome. <clears throat> if we did not have a restricted domain at all, then this would be everything I drew. I would say, oh yeah, the first answer is going to happen at pi over 6. And the second answer will happen at a pi over 6 before pi. So 1 minus 1 sixth is 5 sixths. And I would get that. Very easy. How I got the two triangles? I get that one half the top. Yeah. Yes. You want to know how I know it's pi over six and five pi over six? So it's you were comfortable with thirty degrees? This is one sixth of one eighty. That's why it's pi over six, because pi radians represents 180 degrees. So this is a one over six, which is why I tried to draw the triangle to scale. Because watch, let's count our sixths. One two, three pi over six, also known as pi over two, four pi over six, also known as pi over three, two pi over three, five pi over six, six pi over six. So those are these six slices. So my answer is at first slice and the fifth slice. Is that better? Okay. Now, what if we had to work in our restricted domain? to generate these specific five solutions. Here's how you would want to do that. I would label my quadrantal angles both positive and negative. I'd start with the negatives though because I know that I'm going from negative 3 pi over 2. So this is 0 and then going clockwise this would be negative pi over 2. This would be negative pi, actually I'll stack it, and this would be negative 3 pi over 2. Is everybody okay with that if I'm going clockwise? Pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, but they're all negative because I'm going clockwise. My domain began at negative 3 pi over 2. Okay, now I'm going to go clockwise, or counterclockwise. I'm going to go the correct way for positive angles. Zero, Pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, which is 2 pi, 5 pi over 2, 6 pi over 2, which is 3 pi, 7 pi over 2, which is where my domain came to an end. 
All right. I know that this is going to look a little wild, but this is how I do this. I'm going to grab two different colors. I'm going to allow purple to represent my negative angles. Cool with this? And I'm going to draw an arc that goes through negative 3 pi over 2 radians. Starting at 0, there. That arc tracked negative 3 pi over 2 radians. Comfortable with that? How many of my triangles did it hit? One of them. That means I have one negative solution. And that one negative solution is a pi over 6 past negative pi, which is where the negative 7 pi over 6 would come from. Because here's negative 6 slices, negative 7th slice. Cool with that? Adi, you look like you're about to have a question, but you're not quite sure. I'm going to draw all slices, okay? Negative 1 pi over 6, negative 2 pi over 6, negative 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6, negative 7 pi over 6. Like that. So we hit my triangle once. So I had one negative solution. Now I'm going to draw a green arc to represent positive. And I'm going to track all the way through 7 pi over 2. Every time my green arc hits a triangle, that is a positive solution. There's one, there's two, there's three, there's four. Oh, stop. Okay. So I had four positive solutions. So I started here and it went zero, pi over two. So one pi over two, two pi over two, three pi over two, four pi over two, five pi over two, six pi over two, seven pi over two came to a stop. And my green arc hit my triangles a total of four times. So I have four green solutions. And those solutions would be 1 pi over 6, 2, 3, 4, 5 pi over 6, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 pi over 6, 13 pi over 6, 17 pi over 6. There they all are. Okay? I know that the like snail shell thing looks a little ridiculous, but that's how I do it because I don't have my unit circle memorized and I don't do trig without a picture. If you feel that that is ridiculous to draw it like that, then what you would need to do is at least draw the two, set up your generic rule, and then start adding and subtracting two pies until you exceed your domain. And I mean, I don't know if that's any faster or any slower, but I just, I'd just rather have pictures. I'm, I'm a fan of pictures. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then just keep track of them. It's literally positive. 1 pi over 6, that's a solution. 2, 3, 4, 5 pi over 6, that's a solution. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 pi over 6, that's a solution. 14, 15, 16, 17 pi over 6, and that's the last one that I hit. Yep. Do you measure by hits on the Yes, that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at when my snail shell is intersecting the terminal ray, the hypotenuse, so to speak, yes. That's exactly what I'm doing. So I'm like here, 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 and here. And I normally wouldn't draw all of the sixths. I go a pi over six and one before six pi over six, so five pi over six. This is 12 pi over six, so one past it's 13 pi over six. This is 18 pi over six, so one before it is 17 pi over six. So helps to be comfortable with fractions. Alrighty, uh, in all reality, you shouldn't have been given this picture. You should have had to draw it. But how? Well, evaluate, I mean, excuse me, isolate, wrong late word. Isolate your trigonometry. Add one to both sides. Divide both sides by two. 
Then I would ask you the question, in which two quadrants is cosine positive? And everybody in the room would shout, one and four. So I would have drawn my quadrantals, and I would have drawn a triangle in quadrant one, a triangle in quadrant four. I would have said picture not drawn to scale. I wouldn't have put one halves because I wouldn't have done a unit circle because I'm not a fan of that. Instead, I would have used my special right triangles. I would have said cosine is X over R. So now my X value is a one while my R value is a two. That forces a 30, 60, 90, which forces root threes here. And then I would have said to you, what size reference angle is always across from the root three. Everybody in the room would have said 60 degrees. And then I would have said, great, 60 degrees in radians is pi over three. There. And then we would have had our image done. Notice we don't have a restricted domain. So for this one, all we have to do is count our pi over threes. How many thirds are there in one whole? Three thirds. There are three of them. So how many thirds are there in two? Six. So I have one third and one before six. Five thirds. And if you're not sure about that, I could highlight them in green. One, two, three, four, five, six. Every green line is a third. One third. So that's a pi over three. What's the period of cosine? What's the period of cosine of x, guys? Two pi. Is my green pen dying? That looks like it's, no, just not as dark as I'm used to. And then, again, I wouldn't have counted. I would have said, oh, a third before two pi. So a third before six over three, five over three. Five pi over three. And obviously this is where n is an element of the integers. However, cosine does a kind of neat thing. If your solutions, and this is, this is a very specialized specialized rare occurrence when one of your answers happens to land in quadrant one for cosine you could actually say that the answers are plus or minus pi over three plus two pi n but that will only occur if it's cosine and one of its answers was in quadrant one, because then its other answer is a reflection across the x-axis. And it's so specialized and so rare that I'm not going to write it that way. You could, I mean, it's not wrong to write it like this. You are still technically correct, but it's incredibly rare. And I doubt you would ever even see it written like that, even on an AP exam. So we're going to do it like this, because as far as I know, it doesn't happen for sine ever. It can't because sine's positive here, negative here, and same thing for tangent, positive here, negative here. So it would never work out unless, could you do it? Cosine's negative here and here, right? So you could do it for cosine if it was there and there as well. Like say this was one of the answers, two pi over three. You could say plus or minus two pi over three. So cosine gets away with it, but just don't do it. Don't do it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. By what? Is it supposed to be like the X 
Okay, this x is angle x, not side length x. That's why. Imagine it says theta. This and this x are different. This is side length x, this is angle x. So this first answer is angle x equals pi over 3 radians. It's a theta. Okay? It's not the horizontal side length x. It's not the coordinate x value. It's variable x, which represents an angle because it's the argument of trigonometry. Okay. All right. No domain restrictions, so we're just going to be gener giving generalized solutions. Root 2 over 2 is a rationalized version of... 1 over the square root of root 2. In which two quadrants is sine negative? 3 and 4. Someone said quadrant 3 and 4. Absolutely correct. Because that's where my y values are negative. So I'm going to draw my quadrants. And I'm going to draw in quadrant 3 and 4 a triangle that is never to scale because I'm not an artist and also who cares. My y values are negative, and my hypotenuse is root 2. Pythagorean theorem tells me that the missing side length is a 1 of some sort. What sized reference angle are we working with? 45 degree angles in our reference triangles. 45 degree angles are what in radians? They are pi over 4s. So... How many fourths are there in one? Four of them. So this answer is five. It's the fifth one. This is five pi over four. And this and then would be seven pi over four. So your two answers are And the period length for sine is 2 pi. You don't need to do plus or minus because when you say n is an integer, that includes positive and negatives. Nope, it's not wrong to say plus or minus. Plus or minus 2 pi n, doesn't matter. There it is. Ta-da! Done. Isn't that easy? It's freaking great, isn't it? Um, this question kind of bores me. Well, you're about to see why it bores me. Yeah, we've already done it. It's, it's literally this example. So I could change it if you want. No. Okay. Oh, they say no. Cause they already did it. All right, fine. Let's get all of our trigs on one side and all of our non-trigs on the other. So I'll subtract 14 cosine x from both sides. And I'll add 7 to both sides. That gives me 4 cosine x equals 2. You divide both sides by 2. You get cosine x equals 1 half. And we've already solved for when cosine of x equals 1 half. But just... Just for good notes, we're going to pretend we haven't done it. That way we can walk ourselves through the question set. Starts like this. What would have been better is if it was negative. That would have been even better. That would have been better, right? Uh, let's see. What would I have to do to make it negative? This would need to be a negative 2. So what if we said... What if we made both of these... If we made both of these plus signs, it would be negative 2. Can we do that? Would you guys mind? Let's make them both plus signs. That way it's a slightly different question. That's better. Now at least it's new. It's not much different, but at least it's not the exact same question. In which two quadrants would cosine be negative? Quadrants 2 and 3, because that's where x is negative. So we draw quadrants two and, well, actually draw all four of them. But 
we're going to draw our triangles in quadrants two and three, and I'm going to do my best to do scale. Okay. Cosine would be side length X over side length R. So that would be negative one here, twos here. The missing side length would then be a root three of some sort. Oh, I did a poor scale job. Well, whatever. What size reference angle are we going to find across from a root three? Mm, a 60 degree reference angle. These are 60 degree angles. And 60 degrees in radians is? It's a pi over three. Because 60 is one third of 180. 60 degrees is pi over three radians. So this is a pi over three, but how many thirds are in one? Three of them. So this is a third before one. This is a third after one. So it is two pi over three. And the second one will be four pi over three. So X sub one is 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi in because it's still cosine, so it still has a period of 2 pi. And the second one is a third after 1 or 4 pi over 3 plus 2 pi. And, of course, this is where n is an integer. And we didn't have to do much to make it at least a new question. What do you guys think about solving trig equations by hand? Not bad, but I don't understand what you're doing. Okay. You're getting the all of the places where these are angles. You're getting every single angle that makes this equation true. If you graphed this graph mm -hmm. and you graphed that graph, like when each other? they would cross each other at all of these things. That's what you're doing. You're finding the place in space where these two graphs cross. This is the graph y equals sine of x. This is the graph y equals negative 1 over root 2. So it's every time the two graphs intersect is what you're finding. Yeah, look. Look back to the front. Look, it's two graphs. Sine of x and y equals one half. It's two graphs. Yeah, this one, you're figuring out where this graph crosses the x-axis because it's y equals zero. Yeah, there we go. No, I mean, well, if you make it one graph, you're figuring out where, now even then, if you make it one graph, you're figuring out where it hits zero. So like say you added two to both sides, so you'd get four cosine x plus two equals zero you'd be figuring out where that graph crosses the x-axis because that's where y equals zero. But it's still technically two graphs because you have a horizontal line at y equals zero and some trig. So you could say where four times the cosine of x equals the line y equals negative two. So you're just finding intersection points in space. Cool? All right. Technology. Oh, yes, Cole. Um, on the one, like, on the day, yeah? So the reason, so how do we know it's rationalized? If you think about your two special right triangles, you got a one, one root two, and you've got a one root three, two, right? Sine, cosine, and tangent will never have, so let's see if we, how do I want to draw it? Where's my scrap paper? Is this scrap paper? This could be scrap paper. Sine and cosine are both 1 over root 2, right? Tangent's 1 over 1. Cool with that? Okay. So if you see a root 2, and I'm telling you you have to do it by hand, it had to be a 1, 1 root 2. Well, 
sine puts this in the denominator, cosine puts this in the denominator. So why is there a root 2 in the numerator? The only answer is it must have been rationalized. Okay? And you also just get used to seeing this pattern that 1 over root who cares is this always. You just get used to seeing that. Because what you'd have to do is multiply the top and bottom by root x, which puts it there. So you'll get used to seeing it that way. Now the other one is like this, right? The only way that you're getting a radical in the denominator here is if you use tangent of this angle. Because sine and cosine are going to be over 2. But again, if you did tangent, you get 1 over root 3, right? But again, you get used to seeing this. So it's always going to work out like that, where if you see the same number in and out, but the radical's on top, it's just been rationalized. It's just, it always happens that way. Mm -hmm. Technology... We have two options. We could figure out where the graph of tangent of x intersects the line y equals 5. Just showing you, you don't need to use your graphing calculator. I'm in radian mode. Let me go to y equals. Let me clear that crap all out. Tangent of x and the line y equals 5. I'm going to do zoom trig. Yeah, so all of the x values are fractions of pi. It, here, look. Zoom. Seven. No, you don't have to. There we go. I missed the button. I fat fingered the keyboard. It just makes it so that your trig functions hit nice, pretty, quote unquote, X values because they're all fractions of pi. Now, where is my line Y equals five is the question. My Y scale wasn't big enough. Man, it's got to regraph everything now. Poop! This is taking longer than I wanted it to. But we could have either done this and seen that there was an infinite number of solutions. How often do these solutions repeat themselves? Why, why do they repeat themselves every pi? Ah, because this graph has a length of pi. So because tangent has a, link, a period length of pi, we know that our answers are all exactly one period away from each other. That means we have the ability to write this solution set as one solution set. Cool. I don't want to have to graph. I'd rather just isolate X right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, he's a squeaky on you. I'd rather just isolate X right now. What cancels tangent? Tangent inverse. Arc tangent cancels tangent on both sides. If you use tangent inverse of both sides, what you get is x equals the tangent inverse of 5. Now, this is clearly not a special right triangle. We don't have any 5s in our special right triangles, right? So on, I'm in radian mode, tangent inverse of 5. And you hit equals. Boink! And there's one of your solutions. Now, I could have done second trace intersect on my graph to find that solution. But I'd rather just do it this way. And the directions say two decimal places. I'm going to ignore that. I'm going to go to three because this is AP. So 1.373 radians. But we know that the period length of this graph is pi. So this answer will repeat itself every pi. Where n is an integer. Ta-da! Yes, sir. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so typically a question, if it's not multiple choice, they will probably give you a domain restriction or they'll say on this domain and whatever kind of units they use on the domain, that's the unit you use. So if they give you your domain in degrees, you put your calculator in degree mode. If, you give you, if they give you your domain in radians, you put your calculator in radian mode. Here's the thing, though. 
we never graph in degree mode. So if you're going to answer in degrees, then you don't try to do it by second trace intersecting the graph. You put this, you put your calculator in degree mode and you figure out what this is in degrees. I have no clue. Um, it doesn't matter because I like radians. Now, the last one for today is this one. I don't want to have to graph. So what are we going to do? Inverse cosine. So here we go. Theta is cosine inverse of 0 0.6. I grab handy dandy calculator and I go second cosine of 0 0.6 is to three decimals is about 0 0.927. And what is the period length for cosine? 2 pi. And for all of you that are paying attention, tell me why that's wrong. Oh, well, the quadrant's fine. Adi says something about negative. What you're trying to say is there should have been another answer set. Yes, there needs to be another answer set because cosine is positive in two quadrants. Quadrants one and four. Picture not drawn to scale. Here is my 0.927 radians. So this answer is either negative 0.927 radians or if you wanted it to be a positive solution and let's go ahead and get the positive solution can we agree that it's 0.927 before 2 pi okay so the other angle then which we'll call that one theta 2 oh no not 360 we're in radians dang it i drew a q again theta 2 is 2 pi minus 0 0.927. So that's going to be 2 pi minus that answer. 0 0.5356. Oh, whoops. Crap. 5.356 plus 2 pi n. There we go. Dang, five. What trying to do to me. Now we are good as long as we say that n is an integer. So remember, if your answer could have landed in more than one quadrant, then you need to keep in mind that there might be more than one solution set. The reason why this one didn't generate more than one solution set is because the two quadrants where this is true are exactly pi apart from each other because tangent has a period length of pi. Whereas this thing's two solutions are not period length apart. That's why we have to have two solution sets. Adi, uh, you had your hand up. Did that answer your question? You uh, Will tangent always have one answer set? I'm going to say yes, and here's why. Because it's positive in only one quadrant in the first two quadrants, right? It gets positive in quadrant one, then negative in quadrant two. So unless you say tangent's gonna be equal to plus or minus, let's do, let's, let's, okay. And if you don't have tangent of x equals plus or minus something, then yeah, there'll always be one solution set. But the moment it says plus or minus, you've created more than one solution set. And yes, that will happen. In fact, it should happen in this unit somewhere okay awesome this is a good question thanks nerds appreciate it